My name is John Sobrato, and since uh, June of 2018, I have had the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Board of Trustees of Santa Clara University. In addition, I was honored to co-chair the search for the 29th president of Santa Clara University, along with past trustee board chair, Paul Jenskow. I'd like to extend a warm Bronco welcome to all of you here today, as well as everyone joining remotely via the live stream, whether on Facebook Live, LinkedIn Live, or the Santa Clara University website. Welcome also to trustees, deans, university leadership, students, faculty, staff, parents, and alumni. I'd especially like to recognize Jesuits West Provincial, Father Scott Santa Rosa, good morning, and Chancellor Emeritus and the 26th President of Santa Clara University, Father Bill Rewak. Father? It is fitting that this announcement event happened today, Santa Clara's Founders Day. On this day in 1851, the mission was transferred from the Franciscan Order to the Society of Jesus. Mission Santa Clara and its adjacent lands became what was then known as Santa Clara College, the first college of higher learning in the new state of California. Before we go forward with the program for this momentous day, I would like to introduce Father Michael Ng to say a few words and start us off with a prayer. We are grateful for his 10 transformative years of leadership. During his tenure, Santa Clara soared both in academic achievement and recognition, including being named by US News and World Report as the best regional university in the West. Just to name a few accomplishments under his leadership in the past 10 years, the number of Fulbright, Rhodes, and Knight Hennessy scholars at Santa Clara has multiplied significantly. So too have the number of first generation students participating in our LEAD Scholars program. Our campus has also made sustainability a key part of our mission and has taken significant steps towards being carbon neutral. The campus physical plant has continued to expand with the addition of the Dowd Art and Art History Building, the Charney Hall of Law, the Graham and Finn Residence Halls, and soon the Sobrato Campus for Discovery and Innovation, as well as the Schott Athletic Excellence Center. Our list of gratitude is long, but for now let me simply say, on behalf of all of us, thank you, Father Ng. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you all very, very much. I do appreciate the, the recognition, and uh, it's been a great privilege to share in the great dream of Santa Clara University, the dream that began with our founders in 1851, the dream that we've lived out over the last 168 years, and the dream that is alive in each of our hearts who dedicate ourselves to Santa Clara. So let's take a moment to give thanks to God who has inspired this and sustained this. Good and gracious God, on this Founders Day, we gather in gratitude and in celebration. We give thanks for all of those who came before us, the Jesuits, the faculty, the benefactors, the staff, the alumni, the students. Through their generosity and hard work, they have built up this place for your greater glory and for the common good. We pray that in our teaching and in our learning, in our attitudes and our behavior, in our service of others, we may be instruments of your love and share generously the many gifts that we have received. And as we welcome our next president with enthusiasm, we ask you, God, to bless him with wisdom, energy, and steadfast faith in the wonderful enterprise of Santa Clara University. Continue to inspire in him the dream that you've inspired in us. And may future generations benefit from his leadership and grow in faith and in learning. And we ask this in your holy name with a rousing amen. amen. 
Thank you. Santa Clara University's position among the most respected Catholic universities in the country made this search for our next president critically important. So I can't think of two people I want to thank more for this than uh, John M. Sobrato, our chair of the Board of Trustees, and Paul Jenskow, the co-chair of this presidential search committee, and also the former chair of the Board of Trustees. So I want to thank both of you, and uh, let's, let's all give them both a round of applause. Paul, Ferrari, I prayed for you and your search committee daily. Okay. <laughs> Both of you have spent countless hours to help the university find the right leader. And I look forward to working with the next president, and I'm pleased to be able to pass the baton on to such a qualified fellow Jesuit. And with those remarks, I'd like to call upon our dean of the law school, Lisa Kloppenberg, who was also on the search committee and who will describe the search process. Thank you, Father Ang. Thank you. And thank you for your last 10 years of leadership. We were so pleased to celebrate you on Saturday at our celebration of achievement, and we all look forward to honoring him further and his legacy in May. A bit of background on the search process. Appointed in September, the Presidential Search Committee was tasked with identifying, screening, and recommending candidates to the Board of Trustees. We assembled representatives from the faculty and staff and the Board of Trustees, including two sitting presidents of Jesuit universities. At this point, I would like to recognize and thank all of the members of the search committee. If you're here in the room, I'd ask you to stand and be recognized. Stand. I speak for John and Paul Jenskow, our search chairs, who are grateful for all of your hard work and thoughtful contributions during this important process. In addition, I want to thank the members of the executive leadership team, our deans, center directors, staff and faculty senate chairs, chair of the student senate, and president of the associated student government, as well as the chair of the committee on lecturers and adjuncts. You all played a critical role in this process as we sought to find a collaborative, transparent, and hands-on leader who will be actively engaged in our university community on campus and beyond. The goal of the search committee was to find an individual who will lead the university to new levels of success while building on Father Ang's legacy. Through outreach meetings and surveys, we've had the opportunity to hear from so many of you in our community regarding the qualities we should seek in a new leader. We were first looking for an outstanding leader to serve as president given the distinctive mission of Santa Clara University and all it can provide as a thought leader for Silicon Valley and the globe. The committee unanimously concluded that the process yielded several exceptional Jesuit finalists. Let me note that the caliber of the candidate pool was impressive, including individuals with extensive and relevant background from other prestigious universities. It truly speaks to the national reputation of Santa Clara and the high regard for our outstanding faculty, students, and staff members that such qualified candidates sought us out. Just to give you a sense of the scope, we received many worthy nominations comprised of sitting presidents at other universities, as well as deans and vice presidents. The committee worked on a full vetting process, including several rounds of interviews and extensive background and reference checks. Last week, the Board of Trustees met with the search committee to receive its final recommendation. I am delighted to say that the Board of Trustees unanimously voted to accept the recommendation of the search committee. And now I'd like to hand it back to John to introduce our 29th president of Santa Clara University. Thank you, Lisa. As Lisa has described, it has been many months getting us to this point, and today is the culmination of the hard work of so many people. 
We are so pleased to have found our new president who will lead the university into the future as we deliver on our mission of educating the next generation of ethical leaders, socially conscious citizens, and global thinkers. It is now my honor to introduce the 29th president of Santa Clara University, Father Kevin O'Brien. Father? I'd like to tell you a bit about Father O'Brien's background, his qualifications, and why the search committee and the Board of Trustees feel he is the right leader for Santa Clara University at this time. I will give you just a few highlights of his life, scholarship, and administrative experience. A press release will be available online and will have many additional details. Since 2016, Father O'Brien has served as the Dean of Santa Clara University's Jesuit School of Theology, where he is responsible for overseeing the academic, enrollment, fundraising, and student life operations of the 85-year-old Catholic Graduate School. JST is one of only two theology centers in the U.S. sponsored by the Jesuits, which offers both Jesuits and lay men and women extensive theological and ministerial formation. Before JST, Father O'Brien spent eight years at Georgetown University, serving on the president's cabinet, the last five as its vice president for mission and ministry. In that role, Father O'Brien oversaw the largest interfaith campus ministry department in the country and cultivated the Catholic and Jesuit mission of higher education and Ignatian spirituality among faculty, staff, students, parents, and alumni. Father O'Brien brings a deep knowledge of the requirements of university leadership, having spent significant time at Georgetown and at JST collaborating with faculty, stewarding financial resources, and fundraising. He spent eight months at JST leading a strategic visioning process that helped align the stakeholders behind a new mission vision, and value statement for that school. He has served on the boards of three Jesuit universities and on the faculty of the Jesuit Leadership Seminar, which helps form Jesuit leaders across the country. Just as important, in every role he has had, Father O'Brien always found time to teach in his field of theology and spirituality. He is also a popular an accessible educator, having been chosen by Georgetown students in 2016 to receive the Dorothy Brown Award for Excellence in Teaching, and has written one of the most popular books on Ignatian spirituality to be written in English in the last decade. Father O'Brien brings an interdisciplinary approach to higher education, having earned degrees in government, law, philosophy, and theology. He has been a national thought leader on various issues around the intersection of theology and contemporary society. He has written for various media outlets, including the Washington Post, CNN, and was a regular commentator on church issues on MSNBC. Recently, he was also asked by Father Ring to lead Santa Clara's response to the Catholic abuse scandals, and has been helping lead the efforts for an authentic, and lasting reform in the Catholic Church. Behind all these accomplishments, I want to tell you about the person the search committee got to know. Father O'Brien is both charismatic, articulate, and engaging. He is a natural builder of relationships, whether with faculty, staff, alumni, students, donors, or other constituencies. Many of, in, many of his fellow deans and colleagues can attest to the fact that Father O'Brien's collaborative approach and passionate belief in communication and transparency. He is pragmatic and can rally people around a mission, all qualities that are critical to leading this university. He impressed Paul and me with a grit and a toughness necessary to serve as a university president today, 
especially in times of crisis or unforeseen events. And finally, let me say that while an esteemed educator, Father O'Brien remains a Jesuit priest at his core. He strongly believes, as we do, how vital the mission of Catholic and Jesuit higher education is to serving our world and our church, and how Santa Clara is uniquely qualified to help in this mission. So enough for me. Without further ado, I'd like to call to the stage Father Kevin O'Brien. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Paul, for that. Uh, um, thank you, John, for that gracious uh, introduction. Um, I should probably just stop here and say thank you and sit down. That was such a such, so many kind words. Um, thank you, John. Um, so many uh, good people to thank. Uh, I do want to thank the search committee. Uh, for their um, very thoughtful uh, engagement with me over these months. Uh, Paul, thank you for co-chairing that. Um, my gratitude uh, must first be extended, though, to, uh, to my predecessors, to Father Eng and Father Rewak and Father Locatelli, on whose very broad shoulders uh, I stand, and whose prayers and mentor mentorship I will continue to rely on. And I want to thank um, some of my guests here, some good people who have brought me into their families when I came to the Bay Area, uh, to my niece, Elizabeth, who is a student here, a proud Bronco, the O'Malley family, the Doors are here, uh, to Greg, uh, my roommate from college, who has wisely brought his son, Noah, to visit the campus. <laughs> He'll be applying soon, I can assure you. <laughs> well, I remember when I walked on this campus for the first time, it was about 15 years ago, and it is, for those of you who have not seen it watching online, one of the most beautiful campuses in the country. And I remember walking down the drive and seeing the Mission Church set up against this deep blue sky. And I said to myself that this place, gazing upon the Mission Church from afar, I said to myself that this place has roots, it has a center. And in my three years as dean, I have appreciated more and more the depth of the tradition that binds us all here together. Our tradition as a Catholic and Jesuit university committed to academic excellence, the care for each person, social justice, diversity in community, and the lively dialogue between faith and reason. But I've also experienced something new, how the vibrancy of Silicon Valley and the entre entrepreneurial spirit there animates all that we do here. All the new buildings that have sprung up over the last decade and the recent groundbreaking of what will be an unprecedented STEM complex in the heart of our campus, this growth spurt reflects a contagious energy and an optimism of the valley in which we sit. In those buildings, we learn in innovative ways and we strive always relentlessly for the next answer. We push the frontiers of knowledge as good universities do. And still there, the Mission Church stands. Amid the contagious spirit of the valley and the rapid pace of change around us, the mission reminds us that we have a tradition that grounds our striving. The Ohlone people who cultivated the land, fathers Occulte and Nobili who founded the college in 1851, they are part of the tradition here, as are the later generations who labored here and studied here and taught here and served here and played here and prayed here. The mission, the mission blends with the valley as if to borrow from the poet Seamus Haney, hope and history were rhyming. And here, you and I stand now 
on ground made holy, not because of the buildings here, and let me assure you, they are beautiful buildings, but it is holy ground because of the people here. Over the last three years, and in the course of this very thoughtful search process, I've learned how much our exceptional faculty, our talented students, our dedicated staff, our passionate alumni care about this place. You soon will entrust me to care not just for a campus, but for a community from which everything else, our teaching, our research, our service, from that community, everything else flows. That's why we're here. That's why I want to be here. We have a lot of work to do to keep Santa Clara moving towards our bicentennial, which is not so far off. I can assure you that this will be a collaborative effort and one marked by transparency and clarity of conviction. We need such focus and collaboration because the challenges are great and the opportunities are many. Whether it's keeping pace with innovation in higher education and beyond, or ensuring greater access and affordability for a Santa Clara education, or seeking lasting reform in the church, we together are summoned for a future that is not entirely our own, but one that promises greatness. And we will reach greater national prominence. We will realize the ambitious goals of our current capital campaign. There will be rankings and fundraising totals and more distinguished fellowships to measure our progress but in the end, the measure that will matter most, at least for a Jesuit university, is the lives we have impacted and the change that we have effected for the good of humanity, especially for those on the margins, and for the greater glory of God. Today, I am filled with such gratitude I'm so grateful for the good people here on the main campus and for my colleagues and students watching up in Berkeley at our north campus. I'm so grateful to my former colleagues in Washington, D.C., who watch from afar, and for my friends and former students around the country watching again online. Thank you. I'm grateful for my family my sister Kathy in Denver, my brother Andy in South Florida. I thank my parents who have who've loved me without condition and have given me so much, especially in education, and who during their lifetimes instilled in me values that ground me today. And I thank my Jesuit brothers. I thank you for your company over these years, for putting up with me at times. Thank you for how you have supported me and challenged me and encouraged me. Through the Jesuits, God has blessed me with a life beyond my imagining, a life that brings me here with you now. The spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius of Loyola ends with a simple observation which is good for me and for all of us to hear now. If we are grateful for all that we have been given, then the most natural response is to give back. This, in the end, is what my appointment as president is about, as it was for Father Eng and Father Locatelli and Father Wewak and others. Please know that I accept this honor as my way of giving back and of serving you and our shared mission. I ask for your prayers as I try to honor your trust in me 
And may God bless us in Santa Clara University. Thank you. I'll ask that you remain seated, uh, or I'm sorry, remain standing, sorry, that just <laughs> completely blew that. Um, I was trying to save you doing that, but since uh, Father O'Brien asked for our prayers, I'd like to call up Kitty Murphy, who is a Religious Studies Associate Professor here at Santa Clara, and who also served on the search committee. Professor Murphy will now lead us in a blessing No one's been using the script. I have to find my place. As Father O'Brien begins this new journey with our university and wider community, I ask you to join me in a blessing of gesture and word. I invite you to extend your right hand toward him and to say amen after I do for each of these prayers. May God, the gracious creator and sustainer of all life, bless you with the creativity, courage, wisdom, humility, and compassion as you lead Santa Clara University in the years ahead. Amen. May Jesus Christ, God's grace made flesh, guide you in your apostolate of university education, helping you to see how so many diverse parts might be knit together into one body for the tremendous work of justice and love that our university community and our world so desperately need. Amen. May the Spirit of God, the Spirit of love and source of unity, fill you as you discern the greater service and the more universal good toward which all of us, students, staff, trustees, alumni, benefactors, faculty, and administrators, may be directed. Amen. May God bless the Jesuit community who will companion you in a special way as fellow educators, priests, and brothers in the years ahead. Amen. And may the blessing of our gracious and almighty God touch all of us gathered here this morning, invigorating our commitment to be a community that embraces diversity, welcomes others, seeks the truth, and works for justice so that we may continue the university's mission to form leaders who will change the world. Amen. Thank you, Professor Murphy. Uh, just two quick announcements. First, there'll be refreshments afterwards. Uh, and second, after photographs, Father O'Brien will be interviewed by the media. So if you can let us make our way out with uh, the university and university's marketing communications team as quickly as possible. That would be much appreciated. So to conclude, I want to thank you all for joining us at this milestone event in our university's history. And as always, go Broncos. Wow.